Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you 11 science-backed ways to boost and protect your collagen in the skin that do not require you to take a collagen supplement. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I am a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up, it really helps my videos out a lot. What is collagen? Collagen is a, actually a family of proteins found throughout the body, including in the skin. And you can think of it as kind of the glue, if you will, of different tissues. It really provides a lot of structural integrity in tissues. And with age, we start to lose collagen and the quality of our collagen declines. The quality and quantity of our collagen also declines with a variety of environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation from the sun, pollution, and smoking. Chances are you have heard about collagen supplements. You can't open a social media app without being hit in the face with an ad for a collagen supplement or somebody touting its benefits. When it comes to the skin, do collagen supplements work? I have a video going into detail about the research behind collagen supplements for the skin. But in summary, the data is kind of wishy-washy and limited. Uh, it does appear as though collagen supplements uh, can end up in the skin after you ingest them, and they may improve the appearance of wrinkles, and they may improve skin hydration. But there are a lot of limitations with the studies that we have. So by and large, while they're not harmful, whether or not they really work or really that useful, mm, kind of up in the air right now, but a lot of people place a lot of emphasis on taking collagen supplements for skin health and they're missing the bigger picture of other things that are far more science-backed and far more meaningful when it comes to protecting your existing collagen and boosting up collagen production. The number one thing you have to do for the sake of your skin and the sake of my sanity is protect your skin from the sun. Do not sunbathe. You are basically destroying your collagen when you do this. If you sit around all day snacking on collagen gummies, taking collagen shakes, you go outside and sunbathe without any sunscreen on and not wearing a hat or using an umbrella, what the heck are you doing? You are basically wasting your time with the collagen supplements. Uh, ultraviolet radiation from the sun activates something called matrix metalloproteinases. These are enzymes that chew up collagen. Ultraviolet radiation also generates a lot of free radical damage that further impairs collagen. Ultraviolet radiation also impairs healing and suppresses the immune system. So you really, you know, you're really just destroying your skin and no amount of, you know, grass-fed collagen is going to rectify that. Y'all know from my videos that wearing sunscreen is super important. You have to do it daily. People who wear sunscreen daily uh, after four and a half years have 23% less photo aging and cumulative sun damage in their skin on biopsy as compared to people who just wear sunscreen willy-nilly here and there. Don't sunbathe. And when you are outside, make sure not only are you wearing sunscreen, but you wear a hat um, and you seek shade. These are really important measures to protect your collagen. Number two, you have got to stop smoking. <laughs> if you are smoking, you are doing it all wrong. Tobacco smoke is one of the fastest ways to age your skin. Uh, studies suggest that people who smoke, when they're in their 40s, they appear as though they're in their 70s. Why? Well, like ultraviolet radiation, the compounds in tobacco smoke upregulate those collagen chewing up degrading enzymes matrix metalloproteinases. Just like the skin, your lungs are full of collagen. Think back to your high school anatomy class. Somewhere along the line in your life, somebody had to have shown you a picture of a smoker's lung and a normal lung. And just think, something similar is also going on in your skin if you smoke. The number three thing that you can do is to try and avoid sitting in traffic. Uh, why? Well, traffic uh, associated air pollution can and does contribute to the visible signs of aging, including collagen destruction through the generation of free radicals. Uh, air pollutants settle on the skin, generate a lot of free radical damage. Obviously, you can't avoid pollution entirely, but one small thing that you can do that's important in a skincare routine to reduce the likelihood of damage from pollution is to wash your face at the end of the day to kind of reduce the burden of particulate matter on the surface of the skin. The other thing that you can do as part of your skincare routine is to use a moisturizer. A moisturizer will help improve skin barrier function and minimize the penetration of some of these particulate matter pollutants. 
another one from our friend the sun and that is infrared radiation what the heck is that it's basically a type of radiation that generates heat and that has been shown also to contribute to destruction of collagen by upregulating those matrix metalloproteinase enzymes uh, and it doesn't just have to be heat from the sun, although that is, the, uh, that is a mega dose and mega contributing factor, but it can be chronic exposure to heat from other sources. For example, people who are bakers, they often will have more visible photo aging on their forearms from going in and out of hot ovens. And in addition to upregulating those collagen destroying enzymes, uh, that heat also can generate some free radical damage in the skin. Incorporating a topical antioxidant serum into your skincare routine may kind of help mitigate some of this uh, damage from infrared radiation that contributes to loss of collagen in the skin ultimately. Topical antioxidants include uh, CoQ10, uh, which also goes by the name ubiquinone, vitamin C, uh, resveratrol, soy, and niacinamide, to name a few. Unfortunately, uh, antioxidants in topical products they're difficult to formulate so that they're actually effective, but there is mounting evidence that they can be beneficial, especially ubiquinone or Q10 and resveratrol. There's actually quite a bit of data for those, as well as niacinamide. Vitamin C, there's a ton of data for, but it, of all of these that I'm mentioning, is very, very unstable and difficult to formulate correctly to get into the skin. You can try it though, um, and these things may help in reducing, reducing the burden of damage from infrared radiation. All right, number five, visible light. What, what is visible light? Visible light is what you see with your eyes. And again, it primarily comes from our friend, the sun. And we have mounting evidence that uh, visible light is specifically blue light actually causes a lot of free radical damage in the skin that destroys our collagen. We also have evidence that that blue light uh, activates matrix metalloproteinase enzymes, again, that chew up that collagen. Now, how do you protect your skin from visible light? Well, it's difficult to know to what extent a sunscreen will protect you from those wavelengths of light. But suffice it to say, it appears as though some mineral sunscreens may offer some protection from visible light. And also sunscreens or makeup that have iron oxides in them may also help block out those uh, rays of blue light that do in fact lead to a lot of free radical damage in the skin and upregulate matrix metalloproteinase enzymes. There's also some thought that applying a topical antioxidant may help in reducing the free radical damage that destroys your collagen from visible light. That is another option. All right, number six relates to a subset of people out there, not everybody, and that is women who are going through menopause. Menopause is a time of our life in which the levels of estrogen drop. Estrogen is actually really important in the health of women's skin. Uh, it is actually very important in collagen synthesis and, uh, and signaling for collagen production. With decline of estrogen, we see more prominent signs of skin aging, wrinkles, and this is independent of sun damage. Now, how do you avoid menopause? You don't, it's part of life. You can't avoid it or escape it, but you may have a conversation with your healthcare provider about hormone replacement therapy. Talk to them about the risks and benefits to determine if that might be something that is right for you. But one benefit of hormone replacement therapy in menopausal women is more youthful appearing skin, healthier skin, stronger skin, and stronger skin barrier, better collagen overall. Another option is topically applied estrogen, something that you put on the skin, that too can help. What about men? Uh, could men put on an estrogen cream? Would it make a difference? The studies show that it really won't. Um, and in women, I will point out, it makes the most difference in uh, areas of the skin that are not exposed to sun. Why is that important? Putting estrogen cream on your skin is not going to undo sun damage. It only helps address the part of skin aging related to menopause in what is called estrogen deficient skin. So it's not gonna be helpful for men, uh, it's not gonna be helpful for people who are not menopausal, and it's not going to be helpful in terms of getting rid of sun damage, but it can help boost up collagen production. So there you go. Number seven, stop stressing out. 
Chronic psychologic stress activates the autonomic nervous system, leading to upregulation of something called the renin angiotensin uh, system and the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And chronically, what that ends up doing, if you are under a lot of chronic psychologic stress, is it um, suppresses the immune function, impairs healing, and it's ultimately going to reduce your skin's ability to repair damaged collagen and to generate new collagen. So stop stressing out so much. It really does make a huge difference, not only in the health of your skin, but in the health of your total body. Studies suggest that people who are under chronic psychologic stress, they suffer from more chronic health conditions. Speaking of stress, one thing that goes hand in hand with stress is sleep. If you are sleep deprived, you are harming your collagen. Uh, you're not gonna have good quality collagen if you are chronically sleep deprived. We already know that people who are chronically sleep deprived have a greater risk of chronic health conditions like hypertension, diabetes, obesity. They have an increased risk of overall mortality. And the average adult needs seven to nine hours of restorative sleep. You can be snacking on those collagen gummies all day long. If you are sleep deprived, it's not gonna make a difference. It's not, it's simply not going to make a difference. You cannot replace the damage of chronic sleep deprivation simply by taking a gummy. People who are sleep deprived have more prominent signs of aging, they have deeper wrinkles, they have hanging eyelids, droopy skin. Everybody knows that when you don't get a good night's sleep, you wake up looking worse for wear. And that is a reflection of the fact that sleep is so important for the healing and repair and recovery of your skin, including good quality collagen production. All right, next up, your diet. If you are not getting fruits and vegetables, it doesn't matter about the collagen supplements. If you are not having a diet that includes fruits and vegetables, you're really missing out on good quality vitamin C. Vitamin C from fruits and vegetables, not only can it help with collagen, I mean, it's vital for collagen, but people who consume fruits and vegetables rich in vitamin C, not only do they have a less, less obvious uh, destruction of collagen and, and signs of aging, but they also have a decreased risk of cancer. Well, what about vitamin C supplements? Can I just take a supplement? I don't want to eat a carrot. Uh, they really don't fit the bill. Turns out that uh, vitamin C supplements, they do not have that cancer protecting effect uh, that eating a diet that includes fruits and vegetables does. But suffice it to say, it's unlikely that taking a vitamin C supplement is really gonna get you what you need as far as protecting the health of your skin and that good quality collagen. Vitamin C is like a key driver, a key cofactor in collagen synthesis. As a side note, vitamin C deficiency, AKA scurvy, uh, some of the notable signs of that are all related to poor quality collagen, bleeding gums, uh, easy bruising. Uh, so yeah, vitamin C from your diet is key to good quality collagen synthesis, but it's super easy to get that vitamin C from your diet without the need of a supplement. Uh, people who don't eat fruits and vegetables though, they, they may have to supplement, but to what extent that's good enough, hard to say. Not only do people who eat fruits and vegetables rich in vitamin C have fewer signs of aging, those who eat um, a diet rich in legumes and olive oil also have shown less signs of collagen destruction, uh, namely wrinkle formation. Diets that you may want to keep in check are those that are high fat, high carbohydrate, uh, and those that are high in meat, dairy, and butter. The other aspect of your diet that I've talked about in dedicated videos at length is your refined sugar consumption. Diets high in processed sugary foods contribute to something called advanced glycation end products in the skin that glom onto your collagen and destroy it. Um, people who eat like a lot of sugary processed stuff their whole lives, they have more prominent signs of skin aging and then poor quality collagen. It does play a major role in the health of your skin and also the rest of your organs. So it's not to say that you can't ever eat some of these foods that are associated with more obvious skin aging. It's just that that should not constitute the bulk of your diet. All right, number 10 is to consider using a topical retinoid like prescription tretinoin, prescription tazeratine, or an over-the-counter retinol. Why? Topical retinol or retinoid applied to the skin can boost up collagen production actually. And it also inhibits those matrix metalloproteinase enzymes that chew up your collagen. 
Now, not everyone tolerates topical vitamin A. It can be very irritating and drying, but long-term use of topical vitamin A is well established for improving the visible signs of aging, boosting up collagen production, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. It's even an FDA approved treatment for wrinkles. All right, and the final thing I will suggest for boosting up collagen production is to see a board certified dermatologist because there are a variety of cosmetic procedures that actually can improve collagen synthesis and boost up collagen. Uh, microneedling, I've talked about in other videos before, creates little bits of injury in the skin that stimulates collagen production. Uh, I suggest though not doing it yourself because there is a risk of skin infection, scarring, and um, something called foreign body granuloma. And plus the microneedling devices that are sold that you can buy, they're often not calibrated properly. Uh, in addition to microneedling, another option is red light therapy. Red light is a type of light energy that actually can boost up collagen production and have a wrinkle smoothing effect. Uh, you can do this with a dermatologist uh, or there are even red light masks that you can buy and use yourself. Now the outputs on those are not gonna be as strong as what you would get from a derm, but they are an option. They're a particularly useful option for maintenance of the results that you may have gotten from, from a dermatologist's treatment. But they're an option and they can boost up collagen production. That is an evidence-based thing to boost collagen. And the other procedure is filler. Uh, filler actually can improve collagen production. Uh, so those are actual evidence-based ways to improve and protect your collagen that do not require taking a collagen supplement. Now, if you're taking a collagen supplement and you wanna continue it, by all means, they appear to be safe. They may work. But the point of this video is to emphasize the fact that if you are neglecting these other areas that I have covered, the collagen supplement is, you know, diminishing returns. <laughs> but if you're somebody who's been thinking about taking a collagen supplement, you're on the fence, hopefully this video clarifies that these other things you should be doing first and foremost before focusing your efforts on finding a good collagen supplement and taking it every day. Um, you know, like for example, if you have poor quality sleep, focus on getting that better. Focus on getting at least another extra hour of quality sleep. Maybe that involves turning off your devices a few hours before you go to bed, lowering the temperature of the room, a cool environment can help transition to sleep better, um, practicing some sleep hygiene in other words, uh, or maybe you have been relying a little bit too much on the drive-through and your diet is a little heavy handed in the processed foods. Maybe consider swapping out a few times a week a home cooked meal made with fresh fruits and vegetables. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you in kind of navigating ways to protect and boost collagen production in the skin. Ultimately, this can help not only in improving the signs of photoaging, but in the health of your skin long term. That is really the priority. And a benefit of prioritizing skin health is that it ends up looking better. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.